What's going on guys? It's Omni Arc and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be going over the leaked infantry legendaries coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. Man, I haven't double uploaded in a minute. Let's crack open this monster and get the party started. Now, everybody was pretty much expecting the next round of legendaries to be infantry commanders because that's te that tends to be the rotation, right? They usually have uh, infantry, then cavalry, then archers, and then they threw in a couple of garrison commanders in the middle there. But we pretty much knew this was happening, okay? Legend Roni posted a video uh, earlier, about like an hour ago at the time of me recording this, uh, talking about these new legendaries. And again, this is a leak, okay? So a lot of what we're going to cover in this video is uh, is is subject to change. This could all be entirely fake, of course. Um, but it it this is a very credible source of this leak. Rockguides.ru is uh, is the website that we've been using for these leaks for the past few months now, and they've been spot on every single time. So the two new legendaries coming to Rise of Kingdoms are Harold Sigurdsson. Si Sigurdsson, I, I I don't know. I, I'm so sorry if I pronounced that terribly. And Zenobia, uh, I I have no idea what these commanders are. Uh, apparently, Harold is a Viking. Uh, so we're gonna get into that. We're gonna take a look at some of the information here. I also just wanted to show you the uh, little commander plates here that they already uh, have on the website, which is really really awesome. So that kind of gives a little bit more credibility as well to these leaks. But regardless, we have the skills for these commanders. We're gonna be going over them. But really quick, the uh, the writer of this article gave us some information about Harold. He is an old uh, a Norse commander, apparently. King of Norway killed at the Battle of Stamford Bridge while trying to conquer the English throne with the death of Harold. The three century period of the armed expansion of the Scandinavian rulers, the Viking Age, ended. So, okay. Uh, he seems like a rough, tough, badass type of commander. Makes a lot of sense for infantry, right? Totally understand that. A lot of you guys have been saying that you want to see more Viking commanders and themes in the game, or even civilization, so this is really, really exciting. Let's take a look at Harold's skills here. His primary skill, his first skill apparently is uh, called Berserk. It says, if Harold's troops are not surrounded, they inflict direct damage. Uh, and they don't tell us here, uh, to the current target when surrounded, troops will inflict uh, direct damage to up to three targets within the radius of the effect. It says the damage of each next target is reduced by 15%, applying the same skill, Herald's troops will receive a good bonus to damage for a few seconds. So it seems to be that if you are hitting a single target, there's a single target damage factor. If you're surrounded, then the damage factor turns to AOE and it probably lowers the damage output, I would imagine, at least by 15% per target. And then on top of that damage factor, it looks like there is some sort of uh, damage bonus. So I imagine this is going to be sort of like Charles Martel's primary skill, where he has a shield, obviously, which is different from the damage factor, but then he also has a 30% increased damage for four seconds. I imagine this is going to be something like that instead, but instead of a shield, it's going to be damage factor or AOE, which is cool. I think that's a really cool um, skill that could, depending on the damage factor, this could be really, really good. Um, his second skill is called Viking Battle Axe. Uh, and guys, these are all trends translations from Russia and I need you guys to understand that this is what the website normally looks like um, and so this is not going to be perfect okay um, so this isn't probably what it's going to be called in the English version but regardless uh, it roughly translates to Viking battle axe and it says Harold's infantry when attacking fortresses and cities will receive a bonus to attack and a chance to reduce uh to reduce this damage when receiving damage the damage reduction effect can be triggered once every couple of seconds so it looks like Harold is going to be a rally commander so maybe an infantry conquering commander which is going to be really really interesting maybe leading rallies with him is going to be the new meta when he comes out maybe he replaces uh, Attila Takeda right that would be crazy crazy cool uh, so it looks like he's going to get an attack bonus and there's probably going to be some percentage chance to reduce damage taken when it, he's targeted so i don't know if it's going to be um if this is triggered by normal attacks or probably not counter attacks based on how this is worded but maybe if somebody counter rallies your rally that could trigger this to go off and then of course there's a a, a cooldown on this so this could be a pretty powerful damage taken reduction if there's a built-in cooldown so that's really really interesting i can't wait to see what this actually looks like then we have the next skill is called varangian varangian i'm so sorry i pronounced that terribly Var 
Varangian Guard. Uh, it says infantry under the command of Harold gains a passive attack and speed bonus on the march. So it looks like we're seeing an, an attack buff and a march speed buff. When Harold uses an active skill, his infantry will receive an increased attack bonus, but will lose a percentage of defense. So this is going to be interesting. It says the effect lasts eight seconds and can stack up to several times. So that means if there's a rage engine, I assume that this is going to stack a ton because eight seconds is like that is a really really long buff but it also is a debuff in a way because you're losing defense so this could be this commander could just be like an absolute monster when it comes to rallying because he's just gonna have so much attack and march speed i can't wait to see what these percentages act actually look like when this information is confirmed or leaked but i gotta say the attack bonus is gonna have to be massive to lose defense because as we've seen in the past defense tends to be a more valuable uh stat for anything right in the game anytime you're comparing attack and defense defense is typically a better stat and obviously health being the best so this will be really interesting i wonder if this is going to be really good or if it's going to be really bad because of the defense loss his fourth skill is called stamford bridge when harold and his troops are on the map and deals damage this the commander with a certain probability will use an active skill and will give his units immunity to any decrease in defense for a few seconds this skill can trigger once every couple of seconds so this is really interesting and i think that this translation is really bad but it seems to be the case that this skill is only going to pop while he's on the map uh, and there's a chance that when he uses his active skill he his defense can't be decreased for a few seconds and then there's going to be a cooldown so this obviously uh negates the negative side of his third skill which that like whether or not this is good is going to completely depend on the percentage chance of this fourth skill uh and and if it goes if every skill every additional skill point invested in it increases the probability of this happening that would be crazy or if it's just a static 10 percent like we see so often with these types of things however i could be reading this wrong it says when he deals damage there's a chance he'll use his active skill and and you have um immunity to any decrease in defense so this could pop his active skill as well as negate the the deep uh, the debuff from his third skill this could be crazy good if if the percentages here are are really high now uh, and finally his expertise is called valhalla and it says this is an improved berserker skill but with different multipliers and percentages so i imagine it'll go from three targets to five targets potentially that would be really cool uh, and it probably will just increase the damage factor um that would be really awesome i i can't wait to see what these numbers look like for these commanders next we have zenobia queen of palmyra uh and this says that she declared independence from rome but soon her troops were defeated and she herself was captured both of these commanders seem like they had a pretty brutal demise so um if they're gonna be powerful that's gonna be kind of contradicting to their actual real life uh whatever it doesn't matter this is a game let's talk about her skills okay her primary active skill is called queen of palmyra on the first turn zenobia heals a nearby allied unit with a minimum percentage of remaining warriors or her own unit so nearby allies and allies whoever has the lowest amount of units remaining they're gonna get a heal if it's her she will heal herself um she this the guy who leaked this does not tell us the healing factor and on the next turn he heals his units units healed by the skill will receive a health bonus for a few seconds so it looks like this is a two turn heal either it heals the weakest army for two turns or it heals the weakest army on one turn and then it heals her army on the next turn if she is the weakest army then she would get maybe two turns of healing um the healing factor here if it's high this is going to be nuts um and also the health bonus could be really really good we see you know health obviously is the best stat so being able to give your allies a nice health buff as well as as a healing factor that sounds really powerful i imagine this is going to work somewhat similar to alexander the great's active skill where he provides a shield to the to the weakest army this is probably something just like that which is interesting her next skill says zenobia's infantry gains a health bonus and an attack bonus 
all units of this commander deal more damage to the called armies so it, the way that this is worded sounds like it's a flat buff so similar to pretty much every commander every legendary has some sort of skill that just gives you flat stats for infantry or for whatever their troop type is for this it's obviously health and attack is really really interesting I'd be interested to see what these percentages are obviously that's the theme of this video but if you look at Constantine his second skill gives you 40% health this is giving you health and attack so if it's like 20 and 20 I feel like I would rather just the health but if it's like 25 25 then that's even better which is crazy um then this second part is translated terribly I don't understand what this means I'm going to guess that this means that this commander deals more damage to rallied to uh enemy rallies or if it's being rallied right because her next skill says peerless beauty and it says Zenobia can command a garrison so it looks like Zenobia is a garrison infantry commander which is interesting we've obviously seen plenty of those in the past so that would make sense uh, infantry is pretty well known for being defensive this third skill says um when a commander leads the garrison of your city or fortress all their troops take less damage from normal attacks and deal more damage with normal attacks against the enemy so it looks like um this is going to be a little bit more tanky right so this is going to be potentially good for countering Attila Takeda because you're just taking less normal normal attack damage and dealing more normal attack damage back which is really interesting and because because this is a garrison commander that's why I'm I'm guessing that the second part of the second skill um, it says all units of this commander deal more damage to the called armies I don't know what called means but maybe like maybe this means rallied armies right um, I think that would make the most sense because I don't I, otherwise I have no idea what this means now regardless let's look at her fourth skill it says when Zenobia is leading the garrison of your city or fortress her troops attacks inflict additional damage to the target unit every second the skill works with a certain probability damage multiplier and duration the delayed damage effect can trigger once every couple of seconds so this is interesting I don't know if this is going to be triggered by normal attacks or counter attacks um, but it says her troops attacks inflict additional damage to the target um, and it says that this is a certain probability so I imagine there's probably a 10% chance that normal attacks deal an additional damage factor of X damage per second for however many seconds um, this says there's an internal cooldown which means it's probably pretty powerful I imagine this is gonna work something like uh, Ramsey's primary skill but just with a chance of happening instead of guaranteed finally her expertise essentially says that it kind of changes the Queen of Palmyra active skill um, so I guess it makes it more powerful in terms of the healing multiplier and percentage so that's really interesting but the really cool part is that it says that she heals an ally Ally, a nearby alley or her own troops with the least amount of um, troops remaining two units if the commander heads the garrison of his city or fortress so if she is in a garrison in a flag fort city or whatever and her she's expertise and her active skill goes off it will heal apparently two armies nearby for a potentially an even higher healing factor which is really really crazy so that's all the information we have for these commanders as of the time of recording this video it's 11 a.m eastern time on the 29th of september this is interesting right because it looks like we have a rally commander and a garrison commander uh for infantry now coming into the game usually when we see a mightiest governor uh and wheel of fortune pairing usually you can kind of pair them together uh like that's kind of the assumption um obviously that's not always true right but in this instance it seems like these two commanders are they're both infantry but they're doing totally different things and so i think players are going to get creative with who they pair these commanders with um and i think that that's going to make a, a really big impact in the game i guess one final note is actually this this line right here it says these two new commanders can, that can be introduced in the next major update along with improvements to Soroli crisis and kvk etc um, that's going to be really interesting. I'm super excited to see what Lilith has in store for Rise of Kingdoms. Hopefully, we see a lot of free to play uh friendly enhancements to these events um I, I would love to see that right I think I personally am a little bit more interested in Harold and how he changes the meta because we already have a lot of garrison commanders so I'm hoping that Harold is going to be the wheel of fortune commander and uh, Zenobia is going to be the mightiest governor commander I'm not really sure this I haven't seen any information in this article explaining which is which perhaps the leaker actually doesn't know or rise of kingdoms has 
hasn't decided how they're going to implement them yet. New commanders are always a super exciting time for Rise of Kingdoms, so I would love to hear your comments down below. What do you think of these commanders? Is this what you were expecting from infantry? Do you think this is finally going to end Attila Takeda's reign on the game? I would love to hear your thoughts. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, hopefully you will drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out my channel a ton. Subscribe if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. As always, my social media links are in the description below. Check out my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and Twitch channel where I do live stream Rise of Kingdoms. Finally, there will be a link in the description to download Rise of Kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks. It's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms, and you're going to experience fewer crashes than it crashes than if you're playing uh, the game on an older phone and like I said it's free so click that link down below and give it a try with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace